Have you ever wonder, how is life without technology? How technology is tied to consumer behavior and how it's affecting the society is an interesting topic. From the ancient history of the discovery of fire, all the way to the modern age, technology's role in the shaping of what we know of modern society is evident. Whenever a technology is first released to public, the behavior of consumer adjusts. That technology's benefit to us is embraced and eventually normalized. It can be speed, ease of access, entertainment, communication, transportation, navigation, and a lot more. On a cultural level, technology's effect to society and consumer behavior is quite identical between different countries. The visual and sound presentation may appear to be different, but still, the majority of the population react the same way in different culture. For example, fashion clothes, music, movies and architecture. What people really see is its benefits. Since the beginning of time, technology shapes our lives in many ways. Humans became reliant to technology because it makes life easier, pleasant, and it made us more sociable. Human behavior changed dramatically with the realization of the capability of fire and as an example, cooking implied a delay in food consumption, which required the development of social abilities for the distribution of tasks within the group, for example, collection, accumulation, cooking, defense, even stealing, as well as the socializing effect of gathering around nighttime campfires. The discovery of fire enables humans to gather socially during night time more often than before and eventually social gathering became feast. Which is a more entertaining way to gather socially. Now, let's go fast forward to the present time. We still participate in social gatherings, and technologies are obviously still playing important part in it. We can now go to places faster with motor vehicles to attend these gatherings. We can play music and manipulate lights for entertainment. Digitally, social medias are embedded with video chats and group chats capability so that people can gather socially in the virtual world. The internet is one of my favorite examples in connecting technology to modern society. Because it has connected humanity on a global scale. And its accomplishments make it difficult for anyone to argue its place to our society. Consumption of products has been accelerated due to World Wide Web. Now we can watch TV shows entire season anytime we want, instead of having to wait for one episode a week on the exact time and exact date. Physical products are also faster to acquire because of technology. And with online services like Amazon, sometimes you can get your package in the same day. The internet age has completely redefined on how we work. The ability to sit in your home office while connecting to all of the same resources as if you were in your work office is a reality in today's workplace. This has allowed a lot of people to avoid a two and a half hour commute on the days that they are to telecommute. And even some jobs at this present day supports a full time remote work. When it comes to technology and culture differences, several countries come to my mind. I'll have Japan, South Korea, and Russia. Particularly, I'm very interested in South Korea and their culture. South Koreans were able to adjust to take advantage of their high-speed internet. Seeing an opportunity. The Koreans effectively shifted their market production to digital and the success of the industry became apparent. The Korean pop. Also known as K-pop. A dominant genre of music in Korea. 
became even more popular with the help of digitized music. Consumers are able to manipulate the songs and use it for cell phone ringtones. And consumers are also able to redistribute copies easily. Again, having high-speed internet connection benefited the country. Korea's online gaming industry is known worldwide. And as a video gamer, I know the advantage of having a fast internet connection in a massively multiplayer online games. MMO Massively multiplayer online role-playing games are one of the fastest growing genres in the gaming industry. It's logical to think that some of the technologies that has been created or being created must be regulated. Correct? People will of course try to use the technology for good purposes. But some will also try to use it with malicious intent. Internet of Things is now growing into popularity where internet is connecting us and technology enormously. I'm very excited in having to use these texts but I am also worried that my privacy will be vulnerable. These texts can learn our ways of living, habitual patterns and they can acquire our confidential information. Creating new rules to limit the capability of these texts and educating the public will minimize the risk. Pepit wrote some valid points in his article titled, Regulating the Internet of Things first steps toward managing discrimination, privacy, security, and consent. Here he mentioned that conservative estimates suggest that over 200 billion connected sensor devices will be in use by 2020 with a market size of roughly $2.7 trillion to $6.2 trillion per year by 2025. These devices promise important efficiency social, and individual benefits through quantification and monitoring of previously immeasurable qualities. But the Internet of Things also raises a host of difficult questions. Who owns the data these sensors generate? How can such data be used? Are such devices, and the data they produce, secure? And are consumers aware of the legal implications that such data create? such as the possible use of such data by an adversary in court, an insurance company when denying a claim, an employer determining whether to hire, or a bank extending credit. These are the questions that we should be asking right now and the same time formulating a solution before it's too late. The idea of virtual reality has been around for decades, but the concept of virtual reality is often seen as a bit of a fad or a gimmick. But with plenty of the world's biggest global technology companies are now getting in on the virtual reality act, it might be time for a rethink according to Tunnicliffe. The first time I saw Oculus Rift, a popular VR headset, I was immediately interested in having that tech. The price was out of my range initially, so I waited for it to come down. When I finally bought it, it was last year. It was an amazing experience when I used it because seeing it on my PC does not give you the actual experience of viewing it from the headset. I loved it and bought my wife another set, so we can try hanging out in virtual world. The big screen VR application feels so realistic that it feels that you are inside a real cinema watching movies with friends and family. I believe that these techs, virtual reality, augmented reality and mixed reality, have an enormous potential in being a part of our society in the near future, because it will connect us in a different way and can use them for entertainment, education, engineering, fashion, etc. I can only imagine what the future might be like and what kind of roles these techs will play. At the present time, these techs are considered on their infancy phase. 
The idea is to have a full immersion experience that it became part of reality. Imagine that you are in a virtual world. Shopping mall perhaps? Here you get to buy all the things you wanted and later on the day it will get delivered to your doorsteps. Then a click on a virtual button. You suddenly get teleported to your virtual work. This idea is very interesting for me but I do hope that developers are able to create the possible gap of physical fitness in the future technologies. Technology has been with us since the beginning of our history and will be with us in the future. I would like to thank you for watching this presentation. Goodbye.